Hi, Coffee Beans. How's it brewing? I'm beyond excited because I finally got my May Sophie and Toffee box. This is the box I have been looking forward to so much. But before I show you, so this is the board game box, which I, oh my gosh, like the featured games in this box are Clue, which is my number one absolute favorite board game ever, and Jumanji, which is one of my absolute all-time favorite movies because I love Robin Williams. I mean, who doesn't love Robin Williams, right? I mean, I think you could ask anybody and most people would say they like Robin Williams, but look at what came on top of the box. This is literally how it shipped. It came with the box with this huge silicone mold on top and everything was bubble wrapped together. They couldn't fit everything inside the box, so they had to put this on top. And this is actually the premium mold for the Jumanji box. And something interesting to note is um, from now on, they're gonna be doing what's called a Pixie Elves box, which I think is smaller items and it's much more randomized, so you don't really know what you're getting, I think that if I understand correctly. And they're also gonna have their regular Sophie and Toffee box, which will be the premium version. So everyone will get the exact same items. You don't have to have two subscriptions. And if that is something you are interested in, then make sure you check my link below because I do have a 10% off coupon that you can use if you use my link as Sophie and Toffee. So make sure you check it out if you're interested. So first off, obviously, is this huge mold, which I can already tell this is the main base of the game and then this you would probably fill it twice so you would do one mold demold it and then do another one so that you get your Jumanji where it closes like this you know typical Jumanji board oh my gosh I'm so excited I'm shaking I'm so excited to open this box plus it's my favorite color it's even better ah! <laughs> okay board games box I'm so excited I love Jumanji. I think I'm gonna have to watch Jumanji while I make this board game. So here are some tutorial and ideas. Also the Facebook page. If you're not a part of the Facebook group, I highly recommend it. Um, you can get a lot of help from all the other people who subscribe to this box. Here are some tips for how to make the boards. These are all the pieces we get, which we'll look at a little bit more closely in a minute. This is, um, these are all the regular items and I know it's three to one resin, which I think I'm just gonna use my own resin. <laughs> three to one resin so much. And then these are the premium ones, which is all the Jumanji stuff, including the Jumanji pieces. One thing that is different, and I actually really like that they did this, I kind of hope they continue doing something like this, is you can scan the QR code to get digital printouts of other things you could make with this board game mold. Being that I do work in a library, I will say I don't own a printer, so I don't blame you if you don't own a printer, but you could always download these and then go to your local library and use their printer. And then here are um, from January, that's so long ago, the January winners, which I hate to say I don't recognize any of these, but these are gorgeous. I love this one with the butterflies. What a cool idea. And like I said, I do have a discount link down below. So if you use that discount link, it's under my name, Bunny DIY, and you can get 10% off of anything in the Sophie and Toffee store. Here is the three to one resin, which I hate. Although the reason I hate it is because I usually have to do math to figure out how many parts of each one to do. But in this case, I would probably use the whole contents. So maybe I'll just do that. I'll just mix the whole, the whole thing together, no math involved. Got all these packing peanuts, which my daughter is going to love. We got this mold that has these really pretty little like Sakura cherry blossom um, coins. I think this could be for checkers or backgammon, which I've never played backgammon, so maybe I should learn how to play. Here are the Jumanji pieces, and seriously, these are so small. Oh my gosh, they're absolutely tiny. I think if I were to drop one on the floor, I would not be able to find it again. But here is um, like the monkey, for example, and my thumb. So super tiny. Here are the little pawn pieces, and they kind of look like pawns from chess, or the little pieces from Sari. That's kind of what they look like. They're also really, really tiny. 
Here is the other mold we got, which is basically kind of the other half of the Jumanji one, it looks like. But I think this is what we're gonna use for backgammon or clue. And I think what you can do is you make two of these and then they fit together like this and then you do the hinges and they close into a carrier or you can fold it open into a big square. So this is a good travel size um, board game. Magnetic sheets, which I'm really excited to try. Oh my gosh, look at this little dice or die <laughs> or singular dice is die, right? <laughs> And all the little magnets, these are super tiny, oh my gosh. So we got the little hinge systems, the die, and the tiny, tiny magnets. Got this really, really pretty shimmery black. <gasps> Miss Cheering, I love this brand. This is like, I think a nail art brand, but Sophie and Toffee's been using, the oh yeah, duh, it says professional nail art. Sophie and Toffee have been using them a lot since I've been a member, so like two years? a year and a half for their pigment powders. These are both kind of like color shift, um, like chameleon powders. So this one is purple, but it kind of shifts to like a brown, green, and yellow. And this one is brown or more of like a taupe. <laughs> taupe. Um, and it kind of shifts to like a yellow and a green. Okay, and then the last things we got are the foil inserts that go inside the molds. So here are the Jumanji ones and you can see how that kind of lines up and that's what goes on the square mold and then it opens like this and then this is inside and then these go on the inside of each box. Let me know in the comments below if you've never seen the movie Jumanji and have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> or tell me in the comments below what Robin Williams movie is your favorite because I don't know if I could say. I mean, I love Mrs. Doubtfire. I love Jumanji. Oh, what dreams may come. Oh no, I, I adore that movie. I love that movie so much. It's one of his serious films. If you've never seen it, I highly recommend it. If you only know Robin Williams as a comedic actor, then I definitely recommend What Dreams May Come. Here is Clue, um, one of my favorite Tim Curry movies. Also Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> And um, backgammon, which I've never played. I have no idea how to play this. I don't even know where backgammon originates from. So I'll probably have to make a backgammon board and then my husband and I will learn how to play it. <laughs> That'll be a whole other video. Well, we got a lot of stuff in this box. I'm so excited to start making stuff. So without further ado, let's go. For today's project, I decided to go with the smaller game board size. Um, not the Jumanji one, but the smaller one meant for Clue and Backgammon. And I decided that instead of using the foils that Sophie and Toffee sent with the box, I wanted to make my own game, but my <laughs> creativity decided not to show up. <laughs> so I just stuck with a classic from my childhood, Candyland. And I found this picture of the board game. Um, it's considered vintage, and I think this one is from the 70s. It might be the 60s. So I decided to scale this to size. I printed it out, and this is the game I'm going to be making. Now, I was going to use the 3 to 1 epoxy resin. Um, thanks to my husband, he helped me figure out the math for figuring out how much of a ratio to use for this game board. Uh, <laughs> And so I was really excited to actually try and put my math to the test, but the total amount of this resin wouldn't have filled up two of these molds, and I need two of these molds to make a complete board. So the amount of resin they sent was only 200 milliliters altogether, and one board takes roughly 120 milliliters. So that means I would have needed 240, which wouldn't have been enough resin. So I ended up using my Envirotex light that I like to use. I also used these colors, and these were actually picked by my daughter because she loves the game Candyland. So we have violet, green and this blue transparent pigment dye and then a white pigment dye to make these a little bit more pastel. I'm also going to use this really pretty white iridescent glitter and I'm going to use this white kind of flaky holographic glitter that Sophie and Toffee sent in another box. I can't remember which box it came from. <laughs> I think it was from the blowout box. Remember when working with resin to always wear protective gloves and a mask. I'll put a link to the mask I use down below. 
First, I measured out the resin I needed, and I decided to go a little bit more than 120 milliliters. So I actually did 160 milliliters of resin, and that completely filled up one mold. So I don't know in the directions it says to use 120 for this mold, but 160 filled it up completely. I stirred that for three minutes, and then transferred it to another cup and stirred that for another three minutes. I stirred slowly to avoid air bubbles, and transferring between cups ensures that I'm getting all of the resin mixed in and incorporated. Then I split the resin into three separate cups, and I didn't really worry too much about it being even. I mixed in the purple, green, and blue, and then added white to each one to make it more pastel. I also added a ton of that white iridescent glitter and that white flaky glitter to make it nice and sparkly. In the directions it says that these molds do have a tendency to kind of bow out, so I used some cardboard from an Amazon box and I taped it into the shape of a rectangle that perfectly fits around my mold so it'll hold all of those sides in so I get nice straight even edges. And then I poured my colors in a little at a time to kind of create a splattered sort of tie-dye effect. It kind of looks like Galaxy 2, which I really like. And I let that cure for 24 hours. Look at how gorgeous this came out. It's so sparkly. I love that the glitter actually sank down in this because when the game is open, you'll be able to see all that gorgeous glitter. But I still need to make a whole other side to this board. So I mixed up resin and colors in the same way that I did last time and poured it back into the mold. And now I have two sides. Now I wanted my game to be magnetic because my idea is that we would end up playing this on the road or in a plane because we do have family out of state. So when everything starts opening up again, we may travel more. So I wanted this to be a travel board game. So that means I need to make sure that the magnet strip and the paper are protected from the resin. So I ran them through my laminator. You could also put this in shipping tape, like clear shipping tape, but I decided to give my laminator a shot. And thankfully the film is thin enough that the magnets still stick to the magnetic sheet. I was really worried that the layers of paper and then plastic sheet would make it less strong, but it worked just fine. Then I mixed up some UV resin with some more of my iridescent glitter and poured that around the border of my game board. Perfect. Then I laid down my laminated sheet and pressed out all of the air bubbles. I also pressed around the edges to make sure that all of the extra resin underneath came out and coated the top. I didn't film this part, but I did use my hand with gloves to kind of rub in the resin over top the picture so that it was still a thin layer, but that it coated it and didn't pop up. It's kind of like finger painting, but with resin. <laughs> Now it's time to add the hinges to the side. For my first attempt, I used UV resin to hold the hinges down on the game board, but the second they were cured, the hinges popped right off. So I actually used super glue to keep the hinges down, and so far it's been working just fine. Now it's finally time to make my little game board pieces. This month's elves box came with these little pieces that kind of look like pawns from chess, so I used those to make four different colored pieces for my Candyland game and I used some of this glitter from a previous Sophie and Toffee box. I used pink, red, green, and gold. I mixed each of these colors into UV resin and poured it inside my mold. I cured it a little bit, added the magnet, added some more resin, and then cured that. If you're wondering about the background that I'm working on top of, this is actually a failed game board. <laughs> I originally had a different idea for this game board and it completely did not work out. So this one that you're seeing here was a total fail. 
but I do intend to share that video in the next week or so so you can see how I messed up, what to avoid, and what I ended up making with it instead. Look at how cute these little game board pieces came out. They're perfect. The only problem is that there's a little bit of extra resin around the seam where the two molds met, but that comes off really easily with your nail or with little nail clippers. It's really easy to scrape off. And even better, it sticks to my magnetic sheet with no problems. Now, because I want this to be a travel board game, I did order a little buckle on Amazon. I'll put a link to the one I ordered down below. This way I can ensure that the game board stays closed when we're traveling and I'm not worried about everything falling out. This attached a lot more securely than the hinges did because it actually came with little screws. So I lined it up where I wanted and screwed it in. I made little pilot holes with my hand drill first and that made it a lot easier. And my finishing touch was to take a little scrap of the magnetic sheet that I had cut earlier and I super glued it to the inside of my game so that my little pieces can stick to that and not fly all over the place. <laughs> and even better is the Candyland game I already own has these little player's cards and they fit perfectly inside this box. And it is all done! I am so happy with how this came out. I have to laugh because this ended up being about an hour and 25 minutes of footage, but it really took me about five days, about a week, to make everything because everything has to cure for a day. So it was a, it was two days just curing the resin. Plus it was a lot of trial and error to get the game board to match up, but I did make templates for you to print out if you'd like. You can find those on my website. They're totally free and they're the perfect size for these game boards. I would love to know what your favorite board game is. You can tell me in the comments below. I would love to know. My favorite board game is Clue. If you like this video and you want to see more, then make sure you subscribe. You can click the little bell to get notified of when I post. I upload videos every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Plus, the June Elves box is on its way. It just shipped the other day, and that is the Good Vibes box, which I am so excited for. So as soon as I get that, I will be unboxing, reviewing, and crafting with those materials. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Love you a latte.